when their GMO seeds drift over and contaminate a neighboring field, they have been suing the farmer whose fields have been contaminated for stealing their intellectual property and using their seed without paying for it. Although the net result for that farmer is, is the destruction of their own fields and the use of those seeds. They can't use it if, they can't use it if it's organic. All of the pressure on main, being maintained organic is on the, on the organic farmers. So the buffer zones are on the to use up organic farmers' lands. And that's because of the lobby that Monsanto and other uh, industrial agricultural giants have. Archer Daniel Miz, ADM is another one of those big, big corporations. The news is out about Monsanto. A lot of people are aware of them. But these goods don't actually result in more nutritious food. In fact, in many cases, they are substantially less nutritious, even even by like what you might find in the seed source, the kinds of proteins that are present in the seed source. But when they're grown in dead land, then they're not picking up the minerals, the protein and the calcium and the other minerals that exist in healthy soil end up in healthy plants or healthy animals. So that's all gone. So you get a lot of food, maybe, but you don't get healthy food. And in a lot of cases, you don't even get a lot of food. Some of those crops aren't even working, and they they still push the seeds. India has been shattered. What Fox Television told us was that we were just the people to be the investigators. Do any stories you want, ask tough questions, and get answers. So I thought, this is great. This is a dream job. Fantastic. One of the first stories that Jane came up with was the uh, revelation that most of the milk in the state of Florida and throughout much of the country uh, was adulterated with the effects of bovine growth hormone. With Monsanto, I didn't realize how effectively a corporation could work to get something on the marketplace. The levels of coordination they had to have. They had to get university professors into the fold. They had to get experts into the fold. They had to get reporters into the fold. They had to get the public into the fold. And of course the FDA, let's not leave them out. They had to get the federal regulators convinced that this was a fine and safe product um, to get it onto the marketplace. And they did that. They did that very, very well. The federal government basically rubber stamped it before they put it on the marketplace. The longest test they did for human toxicity was 90 days on 30 rats. And then either Monsanto misreported the results to the FDA or the FDA didn't bother to look in depth at Monsanto's own studies. The scientists within Health Canada looked very carefully at bovine growth hormone and came to very different conclusions than the Food and Drug Administration in the U.S. did. Monsanto's engineered growth hormone did not comply with safety requirements. It could be absorbed by the body and therefore did have implications for human health. Mysteriously, that conclusion was deleted from the final published version of their report. We have been pressured and coerced to pass drugs of questionable safety, including the RBST. We wrote the story. We had it ready a week beforehand. They bought ads. Farmers in the milk industry say it's safe. But studies suggest a link to cancer. Don't miss this special report from the investigation. That Friday night before the Monday the series was to begin, the fax machine spit out a letter from this very high-priced lawyer in New York that Monsanto had hired. It contained a lot of things that were just off the wall false, just demonstrably false. But if you didn't know the story and you didn't know how we had gone about producing it, it uh, would have scared you as a broadcaster, as a manager. And they decided that they would pull the story. And about a week later, he calls us back. And now we've changed strategies. How about if we pay you some money and you just go away? You're firing us because we refused to put on the air something that we knew and demonstrated to be false and misleading. That's what this is about. And she wrote a letter back and said, you're right. That's exactly what it was. You stood up to us on this story. And that's why we're letting you go. Big mistake. Big mistake. That says retaliation. You can't retaliate against employees if they're standing up for something that they believe is illegal, that they don't want to participate in. So that gave us the whistleblower status 
that we needed in the state of Florida to file a whistleblower claim against our employer. Fox News appealed the verdict. Five major news media corporations filed briefs with the court in support of Fox's appeal. Jane sued Fox under Florida's whistleblower statute, which protects those who try to prevent others from breaking the law. But her appeal court judges found that falsifying news isn't actually against the law. So they denied Jane her whistleblower status, overturned the case, and withdrew her $425,000 award. Canada and Europe have upheld the ban on RBGH, yet it remains hidden in much of the milk supply of the United States. Do the big farmers, do they rotate crops where they let a piece of land actually be able to regain nutrients and whatnot over the year, or do they just keep using the same exact land and just fertilize the heck out of it? Traditional, conventional farming has reached a place where you typically just throw in more fertilizer. And for farmers, this needs to be clear that there are a lot of farmers who would wish not to be using their land this way, but they can't get any money unless they do use their land this way. They have to produce a kajillion bushels of corn, and the only way they're going to push a kajillion bushels of corn out of the same land again and again is by fertilizing and using pesticides. The farmers are actually paid or get subsidies to not produce any food as well. Right. Yes, and they're not allowed to use their land to do anything else with it, either transition it to organic or even really let it go wild and make it a wildlife preserve. They must maintain the field in field form, even though they're not growing anything. Keeping stubble in the field is more popular, but for a long time that meant that you left it plowed, and that meant that the winds came and blew the topsoil away on top of everything else. My little brother and his friends, they live in a town in Pennsylvania, a small town, but it's very uh, artistic, forward-thinking people. So they go to Wegmans. So I guess like a, a tangent question would be, is Wegmans better than, than Whole Foods? And then they make a point of buying food that's, that's organic and sustainable as much as possible, even though they're all in their mid-20s, dirt poor, you know, trying to be musicians, etc. Most young people are not quite so forward thinking most young people are much more nearsighted and what how do we address that how do we get people who are who have little money which is more and more of us these days to understand how important it is to, to purchase correctly to vote with our dollar especially when it comes to our food i think we have to be talking to each other about food and sharing food ink and accessing fresh and getting the word out because a lot of it is education and some of the education needs to be to help people understand how do you cook food when you you haven't really maybe in many cases not even been raised on food cooked from scratch um, so understanding what you do with the stuff to get good value out of it matters and understanding what is the value. And when you're talking about nutrient density, it actually requires less food to get sound nutrition. So, for example, our chickens cost $4.95 a pound. That's a lot of money when chickens cost whatever ridiculous 99 cents a pound or 69 cents a pound or whatever. But our six pound chicken, five pound chicken can feed a family of four or five, two or three times. And you'll still have a carcass that you can throw in your freezer and then throw it into a pot with four other ones and make stock. And when you cook with that stock, you don't need any meat. And that's one of the, the things that people need to learn is how, how do you cook so that you actually draw all of the nutrition out? Another thing is a good, sound, well-empowered, I'll say, egg. You only need to eat one of them. You don't need to eat two of them. And you're going to get a good day's or good at least morning, half day's supply of all that, the protein and vitamin A and D, which is actually absent from most other eggs. So it's just that... Knowing what you're looking for and then realizing that 